You are listening to a Pod Bros exclusive. <laughs> Take Aim Outdoor Podcast, and today is going to be a very cool show. We get to catch up with Brad Myers from his and her outdoor TV. What's happening, Brad? Hey, man, how are you doing? I'm doing doing pretty good, man. I, uh, you know, Michigan's finally starting to cool down, and it actually feels like it's, you know, just about hunting season. And uh, I went out this morning, checked the camera on a bean field before I came to work, and you know, it's just that time, man. It's just exciting. How about you? I hear you. We've been checking cameras in Oklahoma and Kansas, and then uh, we're actually down here in the uh, Gulf at Venice, Louisiana today, fishing for redfish um, with John Disney, the host of His and Hers Outdoors, and then we've got Hunter and Griff Jaggard, their brothers that own Fire Disc Cookers out of the Houston area, and they're a partner of ours, and then we're also fishing with Captain Joshua Gregory, another ambassador for Fire Disc, um, the 2015 Galveston Angler of the Year for the Redfish, and... Uh, we're out here just fishing and having a lot of fun and getting to know these guys and making plans for the year. And that sounds like fun. Let me just say a, a big group hello to all the guys. What's up, fellas? Doing good, man. Hello. Hello. Hi. Rocking it. <laughs> Pretty cool. I know it's a totally different format. Format. I've never, uh, you know, had a podcast with a bunch of guys on a boat, but we're going to make it happen. So uh, excited to talk to you guys today. Excited about uh what you guys got going on, and, and I got to see a little bit of the fire disc grill. That thing's pretty neat. I'm excited to even talk about that because that's one thing I haven't done on the show is talk about just what goes with outdoors is, is cooking. We haven't done much of that. But, but Brad, first tell me uh, tell me a little bit about what you guys got going on with the show and, and what's new, just catching up. Sure. So we've already had a couple hunts in the books and have them on film. Uh, John's wife, Stacy and a bunch of girls went down to Louisiana a few weeks ago on a gator hunt, and they shot – 16 or 18 gators in you know a day and then went and did some fishing themselves so we've got that show john's been up to uh, wyoming on elk hunt already this year and had four or five real close encounters with his bow and it just never came together so he's going to be back up there in a few weeks on a rifle hunt with them and um, they've got a big seven by seven they've kind of been watching and holding out or hoping that when john goes back up he gets him laid down and then you know obviously I had a little turmoil this year with the farm I've hunted for 20 years in Kansas is gone. And uh, luckily, I stumbled into another 6,000-acre farm that may be better than the last place. And I didn't know that was possible, but uh, pretty excited with what we've pulled off trail cameras so far in the summer. And it's probably going to take a while to learn that farm and really learn how to hunt it and those deer and things. But, you know, that's part of the challenge. It's not called shooting. It's called hunting. So we enjoy that. And then... uh, you know, this time of year is just we're really ramped up and getting ready to lay down a bunch of footage and figure out kind of storyboard these shows and see what we get on film and then what we can do for our season. Yeah, super cool. I, it sounds like you have a lot going on, and, and let's touch base on that again here in a minute. But tell me a little bit, Brad, of what you guys are doing down there right now and, and just sounds like you guys are just basically having a really good good time in between the fishing. Sure. So we uh, – we reached out to fire this this summer and got on a conference call and kind of, you know, it's kind of a dance. You start to feel each other out and want to, you know, see if uh, it's a mutually beneficial partnership. You know, you don't want to just be a TV show that over promises and under delivers. And, you know, that, that happens. And so we want to make sure that things are going to, you know, we don't want to just get product and advertise on the show and that's it. We want to make these relationships that last a long time and, we want to sell grills for them. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what we're here for as ambassadors is to sell grills. And so we've been talking with Hunter and Grip over the course of the summer and making some plans for some shows, you know, and they're big partners with a lot of these country music artists and red dirt musicians and things. And so they're kind of going after that crowd, the tailgate crowd and all that. But this hunting and fishing crowd, you know, that's part of why we do what we do is so we can eat it. And so we felt like it was a natural fit, and then they called and said, hey, guys, we're going on this fishing trip. Do you guys want to come? And I was supposed to be going to Hawaii. Sorry, there's a helicopter flying over right now. They're taking guys out to the rigs out here on the Gulf, so right. we'll let it fly by here for a second. Hopefully it's not the game works. <laughs> <laughs> so this partnership kind of just naturally came about, and then when they offered this trip, I wasn't going to be able to go because I was supposed to be in Hawaii for my anniversary trip, and then my wife 
changed the dates on it. So I was like, perfect, I'm going red fishing. So we jumped at the opportunity and came down yesterday and introduced, you know, met these guys and got to introduce ourselves to them. And we fished for a while yesterday and caught some fish and had a good time last night. Now we're out here today and gonna gonna fish all day till dark again and hopefully catch a bunch more fish. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's uh, super cool. Are the are uh, the guys there? Are they available uh, to speak on behalf of the grills and and let all the listeners yeah, they're, know? Yeah, they're right here. We got you on. Right. We got you on speaker here in the boat, so everybody right. can hear and we can all chime in. So feel free to ask questions or do whatever, man. Yeah. So guys, if you would just paint me a picture of uh, the fire grill and uh, or the fire disc grill and and basically what it does, how it operates, and how it's different from the other grills and, and why guys that are in the outdoor segment or, you know, guys that hunt, guys that fish would want to be uh, interested in purchasing one of these. Yeah, no problem. This is Griff Jaggard, uh, president of Fire Disc. I'm here with Hunter, uh, CEO of Fire Disc. And, yeah, Fire Disc is, you know, it was originally designed from a plow disc, a uh, farmer's plow disc, and uh, we re-engineered it so that it was absolutely portable and could virtually cook anything. So it is basically the ultimate portable propane cooker. Uh, if you, you know, you're on your deer lease, you're out fishing in Venice like we are, um, you're out, um, you know, deep sea fishing. It's the ultimate fishing and hunting grill you can do. You can go from searing steaks at 600 degrees to uh, cooking gumbo for a group of, you know, 30, 40 people. Uh, it's made to cook fast, and uh, it's absolutely probably the most uh, indestructible cooker on the market today. Hunter and I, when we designed these, uh, you know, we had so many grills and cookers over the years that we just got tired of, you know, looking at that wheel's going to rust, that's going to fall off, and we just wanted something that was absolutely indestructible, and that's what we built with Fire Disc. That's pretty cool. So, Hunter, if you would tell me a little bit about this, are we looking at charcoal, are we looking at propane, or in, uh, you know, storage-wise, is this something guys can throw in a vehicle, in the back of the pickup truck, how's, how's all that work? Yeah, port, this is Hunter Jaggard. Uh, portability really is key, especially when you're in the outdoors. People want something that's easy to take somewhere, uh, that lasts a long time. And, you know, really the technology with the fire disc is it works off the small green tank. So you get about an hour and a half to two hours. So we're the largest grill to work off the smallest propane tank. And, you know, one of the other things is cooking fish. It's really incredible. No one has come out with, with a good grill. I mean, it's either inside your kitchen and it stinks up the entire house or you're frying in a big steaming pot that just is not a very good solution. So Fire Disc is the ultimate outdoor, take anywhere, cook anything grill for the, uh, for the outdoorsmen. So go online, look at firediskgrills.com, and, uh, you know, hopefully you'll see something that was designed uh, for the outdoorsmen in mind. I mean, that that's why we came up with it. Yeah, that is super cool. So what are we looking at uh, as as far as availability? Where can, you know, people look to purchase this or go online and, and check you guys out? Our website is firediskcookers.com. Uh, we sell them at Ace Hardware's, Do It Best, True Values, Cabela's, Academy, several independent stores uh, across the country, uh, Orchelands, and there'll be plenty more coming ahead here in the next six months. So check us out online uh, for that, and you can uh, go to our page and, you know, locate retailers across the country. And, Brandon, I'll chime in. You can use uh, – if you go to firediscookers.com and use the code at checkout, his in hers outdoors, that gives them 10% off on their order too. Yep, and right now for a limited time we're offering free shipping. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a good deal. So uh, one more thing I just wanted to ask, just and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, this type of grill doesn't have like the slotted grates in it. It's, that's correct, right? No, that's correct. It's like a wok almost with sides on it. Like one of my favorite things to do is cook chili on it. So you brown your meat, you throw all your stuff in on top of it, turn it down to low and let it simmer, and you can just sit there and let your chili simmer and cook all together. And it's nice because you don't have that mess inside. And when you're done, the cleanup on these things is a breeze. You wipe them out and you're good. I mean, it's done. It's easy. It's completely collapsible. There's there's three pieces, so it collapses. You can lay it lays flat. It ships in a box no thicker than six inches. Yeah. This is Captain Joshua Gregory, and one of the things that made the fire disc grill so useful here in the backwaters and marshes of Louisiana is that there's so many camps, and the fire disc grill has really opened the door to allowing a, a grill be easily transported in the boat, set up at a camp 
or any of the beach locations. And and these southern Louisiana, the the meals that the gumbos, the uh, etouffee, everything that's cooked down here in Louisiana at these camps is 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 made very easily done on the boat, portable uh, by the fire disc grill. Yeah, that's very cool. I it, that's what I like about it, and I, you know, and it fits so well with uh, you know all of us guys hunting and fishing and just you know what we call camp life. It's a uh, you know what I've seen of the product is is pretty amazing, and uh, I know one thing. I haven't ate today, and it's kind of making me hungry right now, which is going to suck the rest of the day at work here. And we're planning on throwing some uh, redfish on the half shell on ours tonight, and searing those dudes up, and getting them, ate, you know, cooking them up later when we get in. And so we'll get some photos we can send you and rub it in even more. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, Brad can text me a couple photos just to kind of put it right in my rib cage there. <laughs> Well, that's cool. So, tell me a little bit about the fishing, guys. What what's going on there, and uh, what are what mainly are you guys fishing well, for? Well, let Joshua take that one. He's yeah. down here. Yeah. The, the yeah, red Josh. fishing here is certainly is certainly world class. You, it, it's a it's a very dynamic uh, ecosystem because the outflow of the Mississippi River, where it discharges here in basically into the Gulf, uh, you have a, a, a hyper freshwater uh, discharge into a hyper salinity ecosystem and and so we're at a area here in the delta where we are catching largemouth bass we are catching redfish in the same water where we're seeing sharks sheephead mullet flounder, flounder. stingrays out the wazoo i'm bringing my bow next time and gators yeah alligators so <laughs> so you have fresh water brackish water and salt water all within uh, uh, the same area and so the vegetation here, the grass, the hydrilla, uh, is is plentiful, and and there's pockets of clear water. The fish were more concentrated last week when we had a low tide, uh, but with the north wind from this last front that we've seen, uh, we we we've had uh, our pockets of clean water has changed to a different shoreline, so we're making some adjustments. Uh, the fish are more scattered out, uh, and, and they're more protected underneath the hydrilla and the weeds and the grass and so the, the high cane uh, but the the fish that are out moving around uh, we, we have a lot of sunlight today and so the, the redfish are pretty easy to spot those are the fish that are floating around and uh, we're presenting uh, a, a four inch bass assassin sea shad that uh, you know, if you put it right in front of them and you, you twitch it right we're, you know we're, we're getting some nice aggressive strikes we've got some beautiful fish that we plan on filleting out uh, for dinner this evening, and uh, we expect to continue to catch fish all day as long as that sun is out. That sounds like fun. So, Captain, tell me this. If uh, somebody hears the show and they're like, man, that sounds like a fishing trip I've been dreaming of, how does somebody go, like a non-resident, how do, how do they book something like this, and, and where do they get their fishing license to do something like this at? Contact His and Hers Outdoors uh, or Fire Disc Grill. And uh, say that you heard about Captain Joshua Gregory on air and you'd like to get in touch with him, uh, either of those guys can, can get you in touch with me. Uh, you can go to my website. It's gregoryfishing.com. And you check out me. I'm, I'm, I'm predominantly a tournament fisherman, but uh, I can certainly accommodate anybody who may want to want to experience firsthand uh, tournament-style red fishing on their own you know, here in the uh, backwaters of Louisiana. So that that sounds like fun. So I I'm an inland lake guy, so I have no clue about the you know the area, the type of fish you guys are doing. So tell me a little bit more. Is this primarily? It sounds like a spot you can basically go fish all day. But is it better peak time, morning, evening, and midday? How's well, that work? Well, we're we're really keying on uh, the flat and side casting. So on the front of our boats, we have a five and seven foot platform. And we're trolling and motoring around the, the grass flats, and, and, and we're sight fishing. So we're looking for the, the clear water, the sun to be out, and uh, it, it's uh, definitely world-class when, when, when you have opportunities that, at, at fat Louisiana redfish that uh, are, are casting from a platform uh, off the bow seven foot high. So it's, uh, the best way to prepare for it or to compare it is, is go stand on the garage at your house the shed of your barn and, and put a five gallon bucket about 20 20 feet away and, and practice casting that lead head 
quarter ounce or three sixteenths ounce lead head in inside of that bucket. And uh, oftentimes you're throwing at fish that are in and out <clears throat> of pockets of grass, and we we rig everything weedless, and you really got to put it right in it right in front of their face and jiggle it just right. Oftentimes uh, to, to to get the bite. So uh, oftentimes precision is the difference between uh, getting that hook up and not. Oh, that's cool. That sounds like it's got a little spot and stalk action to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hunting and fishing at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, oh, that's super cool. So you guys are uh, doing all that. What else is going on on this boat? What kind of, you know, what kind of uh, inside jokes are we missing out on? What's happened? You know, camp life stuff. So is this a PG rated show or a G rated show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're, it, uh, it, it's explicit, so you can say whatever you like. That's the cool thing about a podcast. It's not going to offend anybody. <laughs> you know, the, the good thing about this trip, it's not just the fishing for, you know, us. And by the way, this is John with Visitors Outdoors. But, you know, it, it's the fact that coming down and meeting these guys uh, in, in a short period of time, making new friends. Uh, you know, that's what it's all about for Brad and us, for sure. And, and you know, you know you're know you with good people when, you know, in the first five minutes you guys are, you know, you're giving each other heck and, and, um, you know, you're ripping on each other. So, you know, it's going to be a good time. That's kind of what it's been like, you know, it's just a guy's trip. We're all, you know, getting together and, and, uh, having a good time and, you know, giving each other problems, giving each other hell about who's catching fish, who's not catching fish. And, um, so that's, you know, that's the fun part about it. Yeah. And John and I were driving down here yesterday, Brandon, and, uh, John looked at me and said, these guys are either going to love us and we're going to have a partnership for 30 years or uh, we'll never hear from them again. <laughs> and within five minutes, we knew we were going to be buddies for life. Yeah. Thunder buddies for life. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. That's the way it should be. And, uh, you know, that's always nice and comforting, you know, for the rest of the trip when you hit it off in the first five minutes like that. Yes, sir. So I know that, uh, Brad and John, you guys, you know, your show's out. Can you guys explain a little bit? It's been a long time, Brad, since you've been on the show, I think a year and a half at least. So, Remind everybody sure. where, you know, where and what to expect out of his and her outdoors TV. Sure. So we're, uh, we'll start filming. Well, we're already filming now for season seven, which we'll start airing in January on the pursuit channel. And, um, our air times, we're still determining those right now, but we'll air actually, twice a week. Actually, no, it, uh, oh. our, uh, air times for this coming up year is going to be 9 a 9 a.m. on Sunday, Eastern time, 8 a.m. Uh, central time. Uh, that's our main time. We don't know what our secondary time is going to be just yet. I imagine more likely it's probably going to be like a Wednesday afternoon or a Thursday afternoon, but our main time is that Sunday morning. We've been on Sunday mornings for the last six years, and we're going to kind of keep it there. People know to look for us. And so, um, you know, like I said, 9 a.m. Eastern and uh, 8, 8 a.m. Central, so that's where you can find us. And also, Aaron, we started this year. We're airing year-round. We'll there in Oklahoma City Market. It was just a uh, – Another way to get the audience growing, and, you know, I don't know, Brandon, if we talked last, we'd partner with Cabela's a year ago, and so John and his wife and I are now uh, pro staff for Cabela's, and we're based out of the Oklahoma City store, which we opened last September, and the nice partnership there is they sell fire discs, so, you know, we've been able to go up there and do some cooking demos at the store and, you know, promote Cabela's and fire discs, so that's a nice deal, and um, so we're really looking forward to hunting. I've got some deer in Oklahoma you know, we've been watching all summer, and like I said, the Kansas farm is just loaded with potential, and who knows what other hunts and trips will sneak in between now and then, and there's always hogs running around Oklahoma and Texas and everywhere else, so, you know. World class waterfowl. Yeah, waterfowl. We always do a big, Christmas Eve is our big goose hunt we go on every year, and so we, we always, we already got that booked, and we're going to go do that, and so we'll have some, uh, we'll have some fun shows and some traditional deer hunting and things, and we'll also, uh, Spice it up with some gator and some redfish and everything else. So that's the plan. Well, that's super cool. I'm uh, sure you guys are excited. What a cool partnership that you guys now have with Cabela. So kudos to that. Congrats to you guys. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's been a that's been a dream come true, a lifelong deal. You know, to say put that name Cabela's with the show is pretty uh, pretty brand recognizable. Everybody knows what that is. So that's our goal next. Is fire disc will be that recognizable, or it's just oh, if you don't have a fire disc, yep. well. That's too bad. You better run to Cabela and get one. That's right. And Somebody else, better. Something else that, that we're doing, too, this year, uh, you know, to, to help with uh, the fire disc promotion is we're going to have probably three to four, maybe even five segments uh, throughout the year that 
um, say we're down here um, fishing redfish, well, we're going to have a little segment where we actually cook the redfish on the on the fire disc or um, do some gator hunting. We're going to cook some gator on there. Or, you know, after we do a deer hunt, we're going to cook some deer on there and, and kind of give the viewers an idea of, of, you know, some quick, easy recipes and how easy it really is to cook on, on the fire disc. And that way they can see it firsthand. And, Brandon, that's the awesome yeah. part that I really love. And I'm not – I'm not on here just trying to put an infomercial together for fire disc, but I'm just being honest. Like, my wife won't use our grill at home, but she'll use the fire disc because it, you go out, you turn the deal on, you light it, and it's ready. It's easy. Um, you know, and I love it because there's no charcoal. You don't, you know, it cools down in just a few minutes. <laughs> you wipe it out with a wash rag or a paper towel, and you're done, and you walk away from it. It's easy. I mean, it's that simple. And, like, I threw it in the bed of my truck on the way down here and we've got it set up on the porch and we're going to cook on it. And, you know, it's just, it's simple and easy. And that's the best part about it. I mean, I don't know how else to explain it, but anybody can use it and you can take it anywhere you want to go. Yeah. It does look that way. And I like the fact, and I'm sure it's a big selling feature, especially, you know, for our, our better hands, the women that don't have to lug around a huge propane tank, uh, just being able to use a little green tank like that is, Man, what an awesome feature that is. Yeah, and it will hook up to a big tank if you're at home and you want to. They have an adapter hose that will hook up to a big tank, but 90% of the time I'm using mine, it's got a little green one-pound bottle on it, and we're good to go. Well, you, you know, you were talking earlier about, you know, your camp life. You know, just say you're up in the north woods in, um, in Michigan, and, you know, it's a ways back there to get to your camp. You don't, really don't want to be hauling in a, you know, 10- or 15-pound bottle to cook off of. You could throw a couple of the green bottles in your backpack, and you're good to go. Yeah, for sure. It, that is a super cool feature, for sure. That is a very neat neat grill. I'm definitely already sold on it, and I'm going to have to have to have one now. So just add another piece of gear to the list that i got to have. Thanks, there you man. go. And, you know, one thing we haven't hit on, like I was camping in Kansas with about 20. There's 20 kids under 10 there couple weekends ago and i had my twins up there at a buddy's house and we threw both fire discs out and he cooked two pounds of bacon and sausage in his while i was cooking three dozen eggs in mine and threw sausage and cheese and everything in there and kind of made a scramble right there in the deal and the kids just came by with their plates and we just spatulated it out right onto their plate and man they all were talking about how fun that was to have bacon and eggs and sausage right there in camp we didn't have to go into the house or go into town and eat and things like that you know and you can cook for a lot of people on one disc yeah that is cool that is yeah, it's awesome, man. It's definitely a very cool product, and uh, it's definitely one, like I said, if you're any type of outdoors, then it's, it's a piece of gear on your list that you, I think now you have to have it. So, John, tell me a little bit about Brad here. I mean, I know Brad. You know Brad. It, it sounds like you're going to have a tough time with this guy. He never shoots any big deer. What the heck? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give him this much. He does shoot some big deer, and, and – you know, uh, I was fortunate enough last year to hunt with him um, in Kansas and, and hunt that farm. And and when you have a place like that he had in Kansas, it's tough not to shoot big deer. I mean, we had, you know, we, we didn't get to, um, you know, shoot the deer we was after this year, you know, last year in Kansas. But there was deer after deer after deer after deer that, you know, you, you look at and you think, wow, you know. And, and so, you know, it, he's been pretty fortunate for the last, you know, 18, 20 years that he had that farm, but, you know, when when that farm was lost, you know, I, I told him, like, you know, what the hell are we going to do now? I mean, you took me there one year, and, you know, I'm hooked, and I'm spoiled, and what are we going to do now? I, you know, almost, I almost don't even like you anymore, and uh, so we uh, we worked our tails off and, and found some people that, you know, uh, had some places, and we started looking, and Brad went up and, and made a deal on a on a farm, and and I, I agree with him. I think it's going to be a phenomenal place. And unfortunately, you know, since we lost the place uh, this last year, I didn't I didn't apply for a tag because we didn't have a place to hunt, and then uh, didn't even get a leftover tag because we didn't know we had a place to hunt till after all the tags were gone. So I've actually got to sit on the bench this one this year. Uh, Brad's got a lifetime because he's originally from Kansas, and so I guess I'm going to be shooting the deer behind the camera um, while he's you know, behind the bow, but, you know, it's, it's all fun. You know, we, you know, we do that for each other. You know, it, uh, I'll, I'll get behind the camera for a couple of days and he'll get behind the camera and, and it's a, it's a cool thing. We've really enjoyed having Brad a part of the show. He's, 
he works hard. He, you know, he does what he's, you know, supposed to do. And, um, you know, he contributes, you know, that's the thing about it. You got to have a team. You can't just have one person doing it all and everybody else trying to reap the benefits of it. And, you know, everybody we have on our team, they work hard and they want to, they want to see their dreams come to reality too, not just ours. And so we have a good time with it. Like Brad said, we have uh, some really cool hunts coming up, uh, some elk hunts, deer hunts and waterfowl. And I'm sure we'll shoot some pigs between here and there. And, you know, we're uh, out here filming this, uh, this fishing trip so you'll get to see a lot more of it uh this coming up season but you know it's it's been it's been fun and and uh but we'll see uh we'll see who, we'll see who shoots a bigger deer this year i know he's got the place in kansas but you know uh he's still got to be lucky well i know one thing brad says it's good i'm uh i'm looking forward to it because i'm sure it's a great piece of property i've uh, pretty much a lot of faith in brad so i, I assume it's going to be pretty phenomenal for you guys in the next couple of years so that's pretty awesome so, Brad, what else is left, man? Did we cover everybody on that boat? Man, I think we've done it, you know, and the the only thing I'd say is go to Fire Disc Cookers and just read the story about this thing and read the story about these brothers, Hunter and Griff, and their their trials and tribulations to get to where they are today and to get this product off the ground and the revisions and all that's on there about the history of it and the way they've done things. And, I mean, I just, you know, it's fun to partner with. These guys are young like us, and they're, they're dynamic, and I can't wait to see what comes next from them because I know there's going to be big things, and uh, we're look we're excited to be a part of the team to to grow with them. Absolutely, and uh, Hunter, Griff, Captain John, very nice to meet you guys. And uh, if you guys could just individually just throw me out where everybody can find you guys social media wise. Sure, his and hers outdoors dot com, or you can go to Facebook his and hers TV his and hers outdoors his and hers outdoors, or you can go to Instagram, Twitter. We're on all those. Uh, but the website, hisandhersoutdoors.com, has all our links on there and everything for us. Mm-hmm. So, uh, for Fire Disc, it's firediscookers.com, and you can find everything on there and buy any of our products online. And, again, it's free shipping for a limited time and use code hisandhersoutdoors for 10% off. And as far as Captain Joshua Gregory, yeah, you can find me, my information page, on the Fire Disc Cookers Ambassador page on their website. Uh, you can also look me up on my tournament website. That's gregoryfishing.com. All right, guys. Uh, you know, I just want to say thanks for everybody. Uh, you know, it's quite unique situation to do a podcast like this. So thanks for bearing with me, guys. Had a great time, and, and hopefully we can all do it again. Hey, man, sounds Thank good. You. We appreciate you taking the time to have us on. Not a problem. And everybody, as you know, the show is live every Tuesday, outdoorpodcastchannel.com, podbros.com, iTunes, Make sure to leave us a review, and we will see you guys next time.